the Android M release is coming, and Android developers across the globe are busy testing their apps against the developer preview. If you've not joined them yet, then now is the perfect opportunity. I'm Rich Heinemann, and this is a quick guide to the M developer preview, the core features you should be testing, and a couple of new APIs to look out for, along with how to provide feedback to us. Let's jump right in. The M developer preview consists of SDK tools, emulators, device images, documentation, and sample code, and you can get it all from developer.android.com slash preview. If you're anything like me, you're going to want to get a device image up and running first. So if you've got a Nexus 5, 6, 9, or Nexus Player, you probably followed the link to the downloads page already and got your device image. Stop. I wish we could dive straight into that, but if you're not running the preview version of the SDK tools, you may run into a missing system.image error. So let's get the SDK first. If you don't already have Android Studio installed, or would like a separate instance for the preview, then go to developer.android.com slash SDK to download the current version. Then you're going to open up the preferences or settings, depending on your OS, go to Appearance and Behavior, System Settings, and Updates. Switch it over to check for Studio Updates from the Canary channel and SDK Updates from the Preview channel. Hit Check Now and wait for the magic. Android Studio is going to update and restart. Then you can head back into Settings and you'll be able to update to the new SDK platform and the all-important Preview SDK tools. Also, at the same time, pick up the new Support Repository. And you're all ready to go. If you're starting a new project, you can now choose Target SDK M Preview. Otherwise, update your Gradle build files to use Android MNC as your compile SDK version. You can also head into the AVD Manager and set up an emulator. Select a device of your choice and use the MNC x86 image for the best performance. And finally, we can get back to flashing our devices. So now ensure your data is backed up and follow the steps in the preview guide. If your bootloader is locked, then you're going to have to unlock it first which means on a Nexus 6 or Nexus 9, first checking in the developer options that OEM unlocking is enabled. Then use ADB to reboot into bootloader, run fastboot OEM unlock, and go to your system images and execute the flash all script. To be secure, it's recommended once that's done to lock your bootloader again. It should be smooth sailing. And if you do hit that missing system.image error, then double check you're definitely using the latest fastboot from the preview SDK tools. Now you have an Android M preview device or emulator ready for testing. As always with new releases, we have some changes in behavior that we recommend you test out. So please head straight over to the behavior changes page. First and foremost, it's the new runtime permissions model. Runtime permissions are here. They provide less friction on install and automatic app updates. But you can no longer assume that just because your app's installed, it has all the state of permissions granted. Permissions are now granted at runtime, and users can also revoke permissions on a per-app basis at any time, even for legacy apps. For testing, we have all new ADB commands and parameters for granting and revoking permissions, so check out the permissions guide on the preview site for details. Always check that you have a permission before trying to use it, and if you don't, request it. If there's a set of permissions that your app needs, like camera access for a camera app, then it can be worth requesting them upfront in a warm welcome. Next. Android Auto Backup. This is a new service designed to simplify building a robust data backup service and to improve the lives of users. Up to 25 megabytes of data is backed up per application, and you can watch Matthew's video for full details. If your project targets M, then backup's going to be automatically enabled, and there are a couple of things you should be aware of. If you have any data you don't want backed up, like device-specific or encrypted data, then you can move it into the Get No Backup Files directory. You can now also specify an inclusive or exclusive backup scheme, or potentially opt out of backup altogether. For testing, there are new ADB Shell Backup Manager commands. And in the M Preview build, Auto Backup is enabled for all applications. For the actual final M release, we're only going to do it for apps that target M or higher. It's also worth mentioning that for testing the new fingerprint APIs, we've added a new ADB Finger Touch command. And that's going to simulate fingerprint input. Check out the preview site and Mayer's video for full details. Finally, some good news. This year, we'll be making updates to the SDK and device images throughout the preview. So join the developer preview community on Plus Android Developers. And you only need to flash your device once, as once you've flashed the dev preview system image, it's going to automatically be upgraded over the air. So please do check out the preview for other features like Doze, App Standby, Adoptable Storage, Data Binding, and the very powerful App Linking. Test early. Join the Android M developer community 
file bugs in the issue tracker. Enjoy another tasty treat.